Have you ever seen a dead body? What's the story? Old security guard guy named John used to rent out our upstairs. Nice guy. Kept a lot of soda around, and would always keep a few around for us kids. John usually worked nights, so it was not unusual for us to not cross paths, or see him a lot as he slept during the day. One day a cop shows up at the house, and I answer the door not knowing what I did. Turns out he was there, because John hadn't come in, or contacted the security company he worked for in a week. Asked if he could go upstairs and check to see if John was there. So my mom, the cop, and I go up to his room. Open the door and all I remember was seeing a blue arm hanging off the bed before I bolted. Guess he had died in his sleep. He was old and a widower and was kind of at the point where he just wanted to see his wife again. So it was sad, but he died naturally. Thanks for all the soda, John. When I was 11 I lived alone with my dad because him and my mom had gotten a divorce about 6 years back. He had diabetes and was seizure prone. One day I was riding my bike home from school, opened the front door, and saw him sitting on the couch with his head back. Being a kid, I didn't think too much of it, and I thought he was asleep. I picked up a pillow, and tossed it to him, and said hey I'm home, but he didn't say anything or act. That's when I froze. I looked closer, and saw blood running down his chin from his mouth. I guess he had a seizure, while I was at school, bit off his tongue, and drowned in his own blood. Only dead body I've seen outside of a funeral. I have seen a few, but the one that stuck with me was when I was in the US Air Force in Bosnia. I was in a caravan of black Chevy Suburbans, and I see this body in a river, caught on some tree branch. The body was just moving with the current, but tugging at the branch with the head underwater. It made me panic, and I told everyone in the vehicle there's a body in the river, and no one cared. More than I can count. IMS and fire service, before working as an ed tech, med school, residency, and a couple years of practice, I've seen homicides, suicides, odds, fire deaths, blunt traumas, penetrating traumas, decompositions and decompensations, kids and adults, I've intubated and pulled breathing tubes, I've been directly and indirectly responsible for deaths, I've broken that news to families, I take on that risk and responsibility daily, some stay with me, others do not. The one that I remember most vividly was my first year of residency, we had this biker lady in Iku who had no family, visitors, or next of kin, she had a state appointed guardian, we'd run out of things we could do, and were beyond the point, where she'd have any chance at a meaningful recovery, so it fell to me to get the state guardian to approve withdrawal of care. Once all the calls were made, and approval was done, I went in with the nurse who helped me shut down the vent. I saw she had a band named to two, so I pulled up Spotify, and played their top songs, pulled the tube, and held her hand the next 18 minutes till she ran out of steam, and stopped breathing. It's been a fine with me lately, because I remember how sad it was, that she had nobody she knew nearby, when she died. It was the only withdrawal of care I had to do like that till covid. Watched a man have a heart attack at 45 miles per hour, while driving his truck down a crowded city street, just past some junior high school kids. His last act in this life, was to turn across three lanes of traffic, jump an empty sidewalk and plant his truck head on into a concrete barrier. By doing so he probably ensured his own death in the accident, but undoubtedly saved lives. I was too far away to assist, but I watched, while strangers pulled him out and tried CPR. Then the medics arrived, took over and got him out of there. The damage from the accident, plus the heart attack, meant he was dead, before they got him out of the truck. So this barely counts. Also, had his truck gone the other way, he would have hit me instead of the barrier. This reminds me of my stepfather's death. He was a bastard in many ways, but I'll be damned if I don't admit he was smart and pulled through when it truly counted. Even if I didn't personally experience it for my own situation, he was a semi-truck driver going down a road. From what I can remember, there was construction when isn't there, but they didn't have their lights going the way they should. He had two options, turn into the next lane undoubtedly killing or seriously injuring the lady next to him or slow down as best he could knowing he was going to crash regardless. He didn't have time to fully stop this was a split second choice, and he decided to save the woman's life instead. How do I know this? Because the lady reached out to us to let her know he saw her. 
he apparently looked right at her, as soon as he recognized the problem and he didn't crash into her, if he had she likely will died, or been harmed horribly, but semi truck vs car means he likely will lived, he didn't, I never saw his body, some days I'm curious, others I'm glad I don't have that image, for as complicated my emotions are towards him, I don't truly want to know what a person I spoke, to not 72 hours ago looks like after being crushed, killed, and repaired looks like, it's been nearly 6 years, since his death almost to the day, it's weird, I think the worst part is that, if you look up the story today reports still claim the lights were activated at the time of the crash, because that's what the construction people claim. And while there were witnesses saying the opposite, and telling them that they got turned on after the official report publicized, is that he simply wasn't paying attention. If it weren't for the multiple other witnesses I'd chalk it up to a tragic accident. But the other witnesses gain nothing from lying, and the construction workers gain everything, if their lies believed. I hated him, but I hate that they would shun him like this all the same. My dad died of massive heart attack when I was 14. I made the call to 911, while my older sister attempted CPR, it was like 2 in the morning and my mom was in shock, I know I saw him, but I don't remember much, there were crisis counselors, unsure of their official term, who showed up not long after the EMTs to comfort me, and my siblings, they explicitly told us not to look into the room he was in, but I did anyway, the only memories I have of his appearance after he passed, are how purple his face was, and the shape of the body bag they put him in, I know I saw more than that, but trauma is funny that way, longest night of my life. A homeless man in Paris about 10 years ago, it was February, and he had frozen to death overnight on the train station platform, it took 5 men, to lift the body onto the gurney, I saw the same thing in a tour a few years later. 6 a.m. outside the Rideau Center and a man had apparently taken something and passed out outside the bus terminal, only to be found as an ice block the next morning. It was all very surreal point it had to have been pushing minus 30 C with wind chill, and yet this guy just froze outside a damn mall in the heart of the city, like point his eyes were still open, and I saw frost on them. Twice, both due to car accidents both within the same year. The first was, while I was on my way to the Toronto airport, to pick up my parents. The 401 from Kitschiner, was stupid as usual, so I followed Google's advice to take side roads, and turned at an intersection, only to immediately see a cyclist sprawled on the road in a pool of blood, surrounded by cops who weren't tending to him. He'd been hit by a transport truck, and died instantly. Wish I'd stayed on the 401. Second time was a few months later, I was living in Atlanta for a practicum, and was driving to work at 6.30am on their very busy ring road, a large SMS thing suddenly appeared in my lane, and although I swerved the best I could, I wound up partially running over it, I couldn't tell what it was, because it was so mangled, even before I hid it, but I thought maybe it was a deer, yeah. No, it was a person who'd been inexplicably wandering on the highway, and got hit by something like three semi-trailers in a row, right before I got there. Firefighter here. My first dead body on the job, was a guy who committed suicide in the woods. My shift was searching for him, when he left a goodbye note, then call it Faith. Two years after his disappearance, a neighbor found him, and my shift was going to collect the remains, and put it in the bag. You would think that after two years there would be only bones left, but his legs and some of stomach was still in decomposing state, and the worst thing was the smell. I believe now, when they say, that a decomposing body is the worst smell ever, so somehow we collected him, and gave the remains to his family, to bury him properly. I saw a dead baby two year old girl, that had climbed into a door on the coffee table, and choked on a sucker, I was 12 the mother came outside screaming. Me and two buddies were hanging on one of their porches, and he went in, and called the cops and we walked up, and looked in, she had blonde hair, and she was all blue, they took her out on a stretcher, it broke my heart to see that small sheet on the gurney, after seeing her body. A couple months ago I was driving home from work, and saw a big plume of smoke ahead, pulled even with where it was, and saw a truck on its side with a driver pulling himself up out the door and a motorcycle on the ground, there was a fire on the ground, bumper from the truck I assumed, 
and nobody putting it out. Bystanders had rushed to help. No fire or rescue on scene yet. It finally clicked that it wasn't a bumper on fire. It was a body. The motorcyclist was dead on the ground. His head was on fire and his arms were raised up, as if he was still holding the handlebars. Horrific. I still can't get over it. He slammed into the truck hard enough to tip it. F. Me and my family were staying in a campsite when me and my dad hear screaming for anyone to come help. Apparently another family staying in the campground was riding ATVs when the husband's ATV had flipped over and they needed someone to help save him because he was trapped. Me and my dad race to the truck and follow the directions provided down a very rough dirt path to find the husband crushed under this ATV with his neck brutally twisted before heading out to rescue him the mom and daughter mentioned that he was communicating under the ATV so finding him DC East was far from expected. After lifting off the ATV we went to the road to flag down first responders so they would be able to locate the trail. The mom and daughter drove by in tears a few minutes after we flagged down the first responders. They stopped and asked us what hospital he was being brought to so they could meet him there. Telling the family the hospital name without sharing what we have uncovered was hard. Imagining what getting to the hospital would entail. I still feel bad for that family's loss to this day. I was walking to anatomy class when I realized there was blood all over the ground and some guy was yelling back quote call the ambulance get a ladder. I saw a lady comforting a group of kids nearby. All I could see was a bloodied sneaker on the ground. I thought it was a stabbing. Then I looked up and I saw this man's body on the top of the bus stop. The roof was caved in. He was still. The blood was everywhere. I won't speak about what I saw because it still haunts me to this day. Anatomy class that day we did head and neck anatomy was not good. Several freshly severed heads on the roadside. It was tribal war between Dayak tribe and Madara tribe in Borneo in 1997 to 1998 in Indonesia. It was the same time with our country's former dictator fell. So all the police and army force moved to main island, Java, to handle the chaos there. Therefore, my island, Borneo, basically became Lola's place. My family is from Dayak side, but we tried to avoid direct involvement and just trying to survive basically. The supply chain was totally in shambles. Some days we only have rice and oil to eat as all the market were closed or raided. Slept with knives next to our bed. We keep a rifle in the house. Firearm is a rare thing there unlike in the US. There was no stuff like pepper spray. So we made an alternative. My brother and I spent afternoons grinding dried bird eye chili. And mixed it with sand and my parent train us to throw it to attack her. Face in case someone break in into our house. We dug a secret hole on our fence in case we need to run away. Some of my uncles and cousins directly involved in the war. And they sometime ate their enemy heart or other parts. This one uncle visited us, and my mom was asking how do you do, have you eat already, and he nonchalantly answered I just had indomie, instant noodle, with Madara's baby feet, it is quite crunchy. Some adults in my grandma village handed human jerky to the children, including some of my cousins, their cousins said it is tasted okay, weird time. A cousin died, while my family had our annual lake trip. They had bad heart problems before, and when they were laying in their tube, they had a heart attack, and died immediately. I watched as family pulled them out of the water, and started CPR. Also watched paramedics do CPR to the point she was coughing up blood despite already being dead. We have a big family, 100, and we were at a public lake so many other people on the beach saw too. Looking back, I think they did CPR for so long, because we had so much family watching. And paramedics didn't want to seem like they didn't try. We were also in a very remote area, so a hospital would have been at least 30 minutes away. The lake now has a bench with a plaque with her name on it in memory of her. Had an internship for 4 weeks at this place as a school assignment. When going to said place I had to first take a bus to the travel center then switch buses from there. One morning went on the bus as normal. Got off at the travel center and sat down to wait for the next bus. Thought the first bus I took lingered for a bit too long. Before I knew some security guard pulled out a guy with no pulse from the bus. Dude had just entered the bus that day as usual then died somewhere between getting on and arriving at the travel center. With no knowing. Kinda fed up to be honest. My parents 
Younger brother and I were on our way home from visiting my grandma. We were on a highway that used to be called Bloody 29. Before it was expanded due to the amount of bad accidents, it was night, and I was playing my Gamma Boy, when we suddenly slow down. As we get a little further down the road my mom starts yelling at us not to look out the window. Of course I do. And as we pass the scene of a really bad accident that must have just happened I see a badly mangled, bloody body without a head laying in the road. I'll never get that image out of my mind 26 years later. I felt different after that. Don't really know how to explain how but it kind of messed me up. In high school we had an internship program my senior year, where we would go to different police departments, and see how they operate, and what they do on a day to day basis. I was with a couple detectives for one of our visits, and mind you, it was just me, and two detectives. One of the detectives got a call for an elderly woman who had died in her house. He decided to bring me with him, and I didn't think much of it. Walked into her house and there was the deceased elderly woman. I didn't have much of a reaction to seeing the body, she looked like she had passed peacefully. What really got me was, when the family started to show up, I was standing in the house, and one of the family members came up to me, and said who are you, and I was like an intern, I'm really sorry for your loss and I'll never forget the look on her face. <laughs>